Hi folks, in this video we're going to look at how you build chains of analysis and the reason I'm doing this video is because quite often I get students saying miss what does the word analyse actually mean? So they'll get an essay back and it will say analyse more or include more analysis or build chain of analysis and they're not really sure a what that looks like and b how to identify if they're missing it so we're going to focus on that today. OK, so what do we mean by um, analyze? So what does analysis actually mean? When you're analyzing, you're doing things like you're weighing up your options. So you're comparing or considering two options. Now, the exam question can sometimes give you those options. So, for instance, in business studies, you might get a decision tree and they might say to you, should we go for option one or option two? So that's quite simple because you're going to weigh those two up. OK, so you'll do one paragraph that says go for option one and then a however in terms of what the drawbacks are. Another paragraph for going for option two with a however of what the drawbacks are and then your evaluation will weigh them both up. OK, so analyze is quite simple when it comes to that. Um, kind of comparing those options is quite simple when it comes to that. However, your chains of arguments still have to be strong and I'll come on to that in a moment. Sometimes you don't get given options. So you get asked whether something was the best decision for a company. So if I give you an example, a business question might say, is um, borrowing money from the bank the best decision for this company that wants to have rapid growth? OK, um, and you need to think about what the pros and cons of that decision are. So you still need to contrast and you might make another suggestion. If it's a longer question, you might say, actually, um, they are not in a whole load of debt. They've done really well. They might want to make share options available OK, to bring in some capital. Um, you must present the pros and cons, but also you must go beyond explaining. And what I mean by that is don't just explain the pros and cons. And this is really important. Don't just say, um, I don't think this company should get a bank loan because uh, they will have to pay high levels of interest. Tell me why high levels of interest are bad for this company. OK, uh, so it includes some context, but analyze it for this company. Well, actually, they've already got a lot of debt. You might say that um, they're not earning enough profit in order to pay off that interest. So, you know, it will be really difficult to pay off their loan, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so you must embed it in the case study as well. So your analysis must be relevant to that business. And I talk about application in another one of my videos. And you can watch that if you really want to strengthen that area of your essays. So let's talk about chains of analysis. What a chain of analysis is, is it's a step by step process where you take the reader, which will be the examiner in your exams, through your thought process before you reach a conclusion. Now, it's really important that you don't make any assumptions that the examiner knows X, Y or Z. Explain your thinking. What happens sometimes in essays is students end up explaining the case study. You know, what the examiner doesn't need is a summary of the case study before you start answering the question. That's not what they need. They want you to explain your thinking. Why is it that you have come to the conclusions you have? Why are you advising a business to do X, Y or Z? OK, how did you come to that conclusion for this business? So let me give you an example of chains of analysis. OK, really simple question. A small business that competes in the market where demand is price elastic is introducing a system of quality assurance. Analyze how quality assurance might improve its competitiveness. So I start off with quality assurance may lead to fewer errors in the productive process. I'm showing the examiner I know what quality assurance does, what one of its benefits are. Ideally, I would define it. So actually, I should have added more. Um, this could lead to lower costs and enable price to be lowered. So I'm acknowledging it's a price elastic product. So how does this affect price? Because price is obviously really important in this market. This is important in a price competitive market. A better quality of product or service may retain more customers, even though rival firms are lowering their price to attract them. So what I'm saying is we could lower price through this method, but we'll also increase quality. So if we can't do one, we can do the other. And the quality will keep customers coming back because you're offering value for money. And then I make this final point. A small business will be unlikely to benefit from economies of scale. So I'm telling the examiner why I'm making the suggestion for this small business, because they can't benefit from economies of scale. So they're not going to be able to reduce prices that way. So if they can't reduce price, it might be that quality is more important to attract customers 
or it might be that I offer better quality, which then justifies the price that I'm offering. Okay, so they're my chains of argument. Let me show you another example. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to show you one example without chains of argument, really strong ones, and then a second one that does have them. So this is a question from the AQA website. Jack plans to grow his business rapidly over the next few years. To what extent is it possible for, uh, for businesses to overcome the problems caused by rapid growth? So I've put businesses who have rapid growth can overcome the challenges they face. So that's my point. One of these challenges is making sure they have enough stock. Also, they need to make sure they have the money to buy that stock. They can overcome this challenge by organising for an overdraft. It answers the question. It gives me a problem um, that small businesses that want to grow quickly have. It tells me how to overcome that problem. But the reader doesn't know why stock control is an issue or, and I haven't mentioned cash flow. I haven't mentioned any of those things that come around it. I've not really broken my thought process down. Why have I gone for highlighting that stock is an issue? What is it about small businesses that are growing quickly that creates, that causes, sorry, stock to be an issue? So look at my second example. So the question is, Jack plans to grow his business rapidly over the next few years. To what extent is it possible for businesses to overcome the problems caused by rapid growth? Businesses who have rapid growth can have several challenges because they can find themselves unable to keep up with demand. So I'm breaking it down. I'm saying, actually, the, the big thing, what happens with rapid growth is you get a lot of customers. OK, I'm not assuming that the examiner knows this and they uh, and they have few resources, mainly money. And these resources are pulled in several directions. One of the issues can be ensuring that they have enough cash flow in order to manage the purchasing of stock. OK, so have they got enough cash in the business to manage the purchasing of stock? Cash flow is one of the main reasons, reasons that businesses fail. So I'm also highlighting to the examiner that I know this is an issue for young businesses and it's the main reasons they fail. So I'm bringing my external knowledge into it. Now the examiner's sitting up and thinking, OK, this kid really knows what they're talking about. If money coming in at this stage is not entering as fast as money going out, a cash flow problem can occur. So I'm now highlighting that I know what a cash flow is. OK, I'm pretty much defined, defining it there. OK, this may occur if a business has to pay for goods before customers pay for the purchase. So I'm really explaining why cash is important for this business and why a cash flow problem may occur when a business is growing rapidly. However, a lack of stock may leave customers dissatisfied if they are unable to get the product. So if they don't sort this problem out, their customers will be dissatisfied. And now I'm explaining the impact of this problem. So ensuring that stock levels are able to be uh, to meet demand is compulsory, especially for a business that is growing and trying to build its brand reputation. I'm linking it to this business. OK, he's trying to grow it, which highlights that it's small. However, this challenge can be overcome by ensuring that the business has a good relationship with the bank and can arrange an overdraft or is able to find some investors that can see its potential for growth and are willing to inject cash into the business. So what I've done is when I've highlighted this business might have a problem with rapid growth, I've said what the problem is, why the problem is going to take place, why it's inevitable, OK, and it happens to a lot of businesses, what they need to keep an eye on, how they can solve it, but also I've given them a couple of different ways they can solve it and what the impact will be if they don't solve it. So I've got all of these chains of analysis. I'm highlighting what the problem is, why it's going to present itself, what the impact will be, how they can solve it. So I'm taking the examiner through my thinking all the way through. OK, and that's really important. That's what we mean by chains of analysis. Take the examiner through your thinking. Don't make any assumptions. I haven't assumed what that the examiner knows what cash flow is. I haven't assumed that they know why they'll struggle not to have stock. I've told them that demand exceeds um, the supply in those issues. I haven't assumed that they know that the business will go for an overdraft or that there's only one source of finance. I'm telling them that there's a couple of sources of finance. There's a couple of ways that this problem can be resolved. I'm telling them what a cash flow is, like I said, and, you know, I'm telling them that this business is going to be pulled in lots of different directions. So I'm explaining my thinking. So when you're trying to do chains of analysis, 
Make sure you're building your argument up step by step and you're thinking, what's the problem? Why is it occurring? Why is it occurring for this business? What are the methods that this business can uh, resolve it? What will happen if they don't resolve it? So I'm trying to explain all of my thinking. OK, I hope this video helps. Uh, you can look through the examples again. I'll try and keep posting them as I come across different examples of businesses. I mean, sorry, essays with chains of analysis and those without.